Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu and welcome to the official MSA National Podcast. My name is Subhan and I am so humbled to have with me Lone Star Council's three awesome people here today, inshallah. We're going to have an awesome conversation about Ramadan and things of that sort, inshallah. And without further ado, I wanted to have each and every single one of the guys and sisters here with me to introduce themselves. So Abid, Sana, Taha, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? What do you guys do? Are you guys students? Are you recent grads? What are you involved in? Share a fun hobby, all that good stuff, inshallah, and then we can get this conversation going. All right. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, everyone. Uh, my name is Taha. Uh, I'm really excited to be on here with you guys. Um, I am currently the vice chair of the MSA Long Star Council here in Texas. Uh, recently, uh, last year, I was the president of my local MSA at UTD. And I'm uh, speaking of UTD, I'm graduating from that university this May, inshallah, with a bachelor's in finance and business administration. And uh, I guess one fun hobby of mine is I like to make funny skits and videos for my friends and family to watch and enjoy. Awesome, awesome. MashaAllah, who's next? I can go next. Salam alaikum, everybody. My name is Abid Shivji. I'm the current treasurer of Texas MSA Lone Star Council. I graduated from Southern Methodist University in Dallas in 2017. Uh, and I was on the MSA board there for two years, uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, I work in tech consulting now. And um, my fun fact is I am also part of the Muslim Youth Musings uh, Spring Writers Fellowship. Uh, so it's been, a, alhamdulillah, a really great opportunity to connect with other writers, like domestically in the U.S., but also like writers outside the country who are also putting together really cool work. So alhamdulillah for that. Alhamdulillah. How about you, Sana? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, first of all, I want to thank y'all at MSA National and Shabban for having us on the podcast. It's such a privilege. Um, I am Sana Arapti. I am the current secretary for uh, Lone Star Council. Um, I graduated in 2019 with a bachelor's in biology from the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, um, which is way down south here in Texas. Um, I do other volunteer work. I've been doing other volunteer work ever since uh, research. Um, I teach English online. And uh, inshallah, I'll be starting medical school in the fall. And LSE is my full time right now, and it's it's really a great pleasure and a great honor to uh, to be a part of this. Awesome, mashallah, that is so so cool. Well, well, guys, I'm so excited to have all of you here, and I'm so excited, and and I'm sure everyone listening, inshallah, will be so excited to be able to benefit from your experiences and also just relate to you guys. You know, we have someone here, Taha, who's a current student. Uh, and then, of course, both of you who recently just graduated and, and Sana, you're going to go back to school. So look at that. Subhanallah. So I think very relatable for a lot of the people who are going to be listening to this, inshallah. And we're also recording in the blessed month of Ramadan. So we're about 10 days in now, alhamdulillah. And I wanted to start off by asking all three of you guys, how has Ramadan been for you guys so far? How are the first 10 days going? Uh, are they going as you expected? Is it going slower than you thought? Are you rejuvenated? Kind of kind of walk me through how the first 10 days have been going, inshallah. So I guess for me personally, uh, coming into this Ramadan, I think this is the first time uh, where it's been really, I've had to put a lot of energy and, you know, time management skills into managing my Ramadan as well as the end of the semester for me, right? I have a lot of schoolwork going on, have a lot of other commitments, for example, like LSC, helping out other organizations here in the area, um, having to be leading Tarawi, like splitting between a couple of places. All on top of that, while trying to, you know, fit my Ramadan improvement, my Ramadan goals, right? So it's been a little bit of a challenge, you know, managing all of the responsibilities that I've had other than trying to improve myself this Ramadan. 
But one thing that has been going okay, alhamdulillah, I feel like I've still been able to, to achieve what I've been uh, wanting to achieve, still getting my schoolwork done, still trying to improve myself as a Muslim, as a human being. And I think one, one thing that has really been helpful in all of this is really learning about how beautiful and how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. I've learned, I've heard several times asking imams, asking people, how do I deal with this feeling if I'm inevitably going to feel at times like, man, I'm not maximizing this time in Ramadan. I'm instead writing up a paper. I'm doing some, I'm spending time on other commitments. How do I get over that feeling of just not doing enough this Ramadan? And I was told to just look at it from a different perspective of you can still incorporate your worship and you can still incorporate those Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and God consciousness in fulfilling your other commitments. So when you when I'm studying for a test, when I'm having another project coming up that's due, if I'm just making that intention that Ya Allah, I would love to be spending this time reading Quran or doing something right else right now, but I'm fulfilling this commitment because I need to do what I need to do what have what has been set out for me. If you incorporate God consciousness still in your life, which still is possible, you can still maximize this month, inshallah. And I feel like that's been a very helpful perspective to have in this month right now. And if you just prioritize, you still prioritize as much as you can, like reading Quran, going to Tarawih, things like that, then you can still find a lot of benefits in this month. So Alhamdulillah, that's been my experience so far. MashaAllah, that, that's so powerful, Taha. How about you, Abid? How, how's the first 10 days been going for you so far? I think uh, Taha said it really well, right? It's all about, like, you know, you whenever, um, like a couple of Ramadans ago, whenever the last time I was like at the Masjid for Tarawih, I remember like, you know, and this is a recurring theme, right? You always hear about Taqwa and you always hear about like, that is kind of like the point of Ramadan, right? Like to feel like God is there in your life, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is around, right? To be conscientious of that fact. And, you know, I think that that is kind of like the most uh, powerful thing about Ramadan, no matter how you're observing it. I think I've this Ramadan has been weird for me because there's parts of Ramadan that are different from how I've been observing the last couple of years that I am very grateful for, right? For example, like in my line of work, I travel a lot, right? So I'm, I'm always flying out to my client. So I'm usually, you know, doing suhoor and iftar alone. Um, and so this year to be home with family, like for every day has been a really, really nice thing, alhamdulillah. But on the other side of it, it's it's kind of weird because, you know, I haven't been going to the masjid for Tarawih because I'm not fully vaccinated yet, right? And I think a lot of people right now are struggling with a very similar thing, like, you know, to what extent can I engage in my community, right? Uh, given all that's going on in the world right now with COVID. So, um, you know, that that's a little weird for me. I know like last Ramadan, unfortunately, I wasn't able to fully, you know, take advantage of it because I was dealing with a serious health issue. So to be able to come back and fast again this year, Alhamdulillah, is a really big deal too. Um, so, you know, I've been really grateful for that. So I think it's been, it's been kind of constantly navigating and Taha put it really well when he said that you know, you have to balance all of these priorities and it almost feels like, you know, maybe you're not maximizing it. I almost feel, you know, like during Ramadan, I feel like there's this like tone, like every day you just like, you feel more religious for lack of like a better term, right? Like you just feel more Iman, but like this year it, it's, it's there, but it's not quite as prevalent. Um, so, uh, you know, that's something to always like keep in mind for me, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. Uh, what about you, Sana? How's the first 10 days been for you so far? Um, I don't want to, I don't want to disenfranchise anyone else's experiences, <laughs> but I've been having like a really good Ramadan and I'm really happy so far with how it's going. I think, um, in years before this last year, of course, I didn't get to do much because everyone was locked in completely. Um, but even before that, I was in a small Muslim community and we didn't have a lot of, you know, resources and programs going on. Um, 
And now that I'm in Dallas, I can take advantage of so much, you know, even though, you know, with, with social distancing and alhamdulillah, I've gotten vaccinated. Um, but yeah, I've been like really enjoying myself and um, I have like actual extended family now um, who came over here to Dallas from California and so there is that sense of family. I can go to pray Tarawih, albeit like social distanced. Um, but I love like the measure that's close to me. I like, I feel super excited to go to Tarawih every night and I've been able to go. Um, and I think other years I, I haven't been able to make that commitment. And this year, alhamdulillah, like I have the um, motivation and the ability to do that. Uh, I've also been taking advantage of uh, roots program so if y'all haven't heard of roots it's like super famous here in Dallas they have like it's kind of like a community center so it's not a masjid but it is you know a place to just gather as Muslims and during Ramadan they have great programs and I've been able to take advantage of those um inshallah today I'll be going to a Quran group um and I've been like meeting a lot of my goals and I'm really happy this year for Ramadan. And of course I'm taking advantage of it because, you know, next year I'm not going to be with family and I'm going to be much busier. So um really trying to take advantage this year. So make dua for me guys. <laughs> of course, of course, mashallah, may Allah reward you. So, so exciting with all the good stuff that you have coming up. And of course, may Allah make this Ramadan easy and continue to keep you inspired and motivated and whatnot, inshallah. Uh, I mean, well, I, I mean, I mean, well, I guess, Sana, I wanted to ask you another question. And of course, we'll, we'll make our way through everyone else as well with the same question. But I know that with Lone Star, you guys work with like different MSAs, right? And I'm sure, you know, a lot of the people who may be listening to this may be a current student, they may part may be part of their MSA, they even may be a part of the MSA board. So one of my questions for you guys is, and starting with you, Sana, is how have you seen other MSAs during this month kind of operate? Like, are they doing special programming? Like, how are MSAs kind of running Ramadan, if you will, on social media and all that good stuff, inshallah? I think that would be really cool and could even give ideas for future MSAs next year to come, inshallah. Uh, so would love to kind of see how you guys have been observing how other MSAs are uh, doing things this year, inshallah. That's a great question. So uh, we have our own Ramadan programming, but that's a whole nother thing. Um, but mashallah, bismillah, mashallah, our MSAs here in Texas, like they're just so awesome. <laughs> um, uh, the um, University of Texas at Austin has like uh, a whole uh Ramadan program they're kind of um the MSA and the mosque there are kind of like intertwined uh they even had like pre-Ramadan stuff going on um the masjid is called Nuances Mosque and they do really great things um the a lot of other MSAs have been having like iftars and potlucks and stuff and um one MSA that really stands out to me is the Texas Tech MSA. I know I'm not biased <laughs> um, because because uh, inshallah I'll be going to the medical school there. But they do really cool stuff. They 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 literally give boxed meals. They had been giving boxed meals, I believe, every night uh, just for free <laughs> to anybody who wanted to come and get them. Um, and UNT was doing an iftar. Um, Gosh, there's so many programs. It's really hard to keep track of them. I love going on Instagram and looking at everything that they're doing. Um, but yeah, they they do really cool stuff. UH has like a Sisters Ramadan book club, uh, which is uh, unique and cool. Uh, UNT did something called Ramadan Reminders. Uh, Rise had an iftar event uh uhd does something uhd is a uh, university of houston downtown by the way i'm using like <laughs> i'm using all these uh acronyms um but yeah they're they're super active and a new msa uh university of texas tyler um they just uh started up with more programming this year 
uh, they've also been doing a lot of uh, social stuff to this Ramadan. So it's really cool to see, you know, that people are still, in spite of everything, you know, staying connected. Um, and and it, from what I see, at least on social media, it looks like people are really enjoying it, uh, which is which is really cool. I just, our embassies are so awesome. Like I can't, <laughs> I can't, um, I can't uh, compliment them enough. Mashallah, mashallah, that's amazing. What about you, Habit? Uh, what have you been noticing and seeing with MSAs this year for Ramadan? Yeah, I think uh, Sana covered so much that, <laughs> that it's uh, like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to add a ton more, but I can speak to it from the perspective of, you know, my uh, alma mater, right? Southern Methodist and I, I think the really big theme here is like the basics, right? Because so many students uh, are like away from home, they're isolated because, you know, they're not able to like go and interact with people in the classroom as much this semester and all, uh, like all really all academic year. But, you know, I think, uh, at least I know a lot of universities are, you know, hosting iftars, like smaller iftars outside and like handing out food, like Sana was saying, like, you know, uh, like uh, Texas Tech is doing um but like just that like community right like giving out if like having iftars together even if you're not like indoors like hanging out um or you know if you are right and taking proper social distancing precautions like that's a really big thing and um you know even like on campus at smu they're doing uh tarawi every night and i think you know those those little things right that that give you that sense of community are, are a really really big deal and you know some of the lsc programming i think um is also like if, if MSAs are looking for ideas and opportunities, uh, we're doing like a, quite a few different things and maybe Taha will talk about that. Um, but I, I think, you know, there's a lot of opportunity, especially during Ramadan. And given that we're virtual, there's there's a lot of, of room to do new and innovative things. Mashallah. Awesome. Awesome. What about you, Taha? What, what have you been noticing this year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I believe my two count, uh, two uh, partners already covered a lot, but uh, I think what I've been seeing this month is kind of what Ramadan is all about. You know, you have all different types of all different types of MSAs, different sizes, different capabilities, but each MSA is still trying to do what they can. Um, each MSA I've seen has done things uh, within their own communities, whether it's uh, having halakas, hosting iftars, um, just maybe uh, giving goodie bags or something like that in their own communities. And then uh, doing something, uh, if they can, you know, outside, you know, either distributing uh, meals to people outside or doing some sort of active community service, right? And I think, that, again, that's what Ramadan is all about, doing what you can, but seeing what you can do to have an impact, not only on those immediately around you, but the greater community around you. So, and, especially this year is a little bit different, obviously, because some universities are still not fully to their, uh, their to their capacity with, you know, COVID still around. But I think it's still been a great sight to see how each community has done what they can do. And if you just keep that mindset of doing what you can do and not worrying about, you know, oh, are you matching up to this other MSA's level? Or are you doing as much as like this organization is showing on Instagram? If you're just happy and content with the effort that you're putting, then inshallah, uh, you'll be content and you'll be satisfied. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for all your efforts. What LSC has been doing, we've been doing a few uh, few small programs as well. One of my favorite things is we have this convert crew where we have these uh, get togethers and just like, you know, staying in contact with uh, uh, certain converts across Texas and, you know, learning about their experience with Ramadan and making sure that they're they're connected and they're doing okay. And this month, uh, we have a small uh, Quran circle as well, where we uh, are helping encourage people slowly learn about a surah, even memorize it. So those are just a few things that uh, I've seen personally this month. And inshallah, it'll get even better with the years going forward. Mashallah, mashallah. Very, very cool to see so many amazing things happen, inshallah. I wanted to now kind of pivot into something that I think is very, very prevalent for a lot of students today. 
Now, I know, uh, you know, Abid and Sana, you guys can ponder upon your student days, but I think this is also pretty applicable to you guys now, even post-college. And of course, you, Taha, as well, you know, you know, in your last semester in college. And I'll let you guys choose who wants to answer this first. But just know, like, I'm, I'm very confident, like, this is something that a lot of students are probably struggling with. I know I would, uh, and I still do. And that's the, and, and you, you touched about this uh, briefly, Taha, but this is about balance. Because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's April, soon to be May. That sounds like finals time, right? So now we got people, mashallah, who have to really want to make the most out of Ramadan. And now they also have their finals that they, of course, want to get good grades in and things of that sort. So I would love all three of you guys to shed life uh, shed some light on how to balance your time so then students and of course your guys self like how do you guys balance your time what advice do you have for students to balance their time so that they can succeed in their school and at the same time they can get some fruits during this blessed month of ramadan because i'm sure that's a, a big struggle so whoever wants to go first um <laughs> i i'm a little far removed from my undergrad at this point, but I do think, uh, like you said, Subhan, the concept that, you know, you're always going to have something else that needs to get done, right? And in college, I think it's a little bit more time boxed, right? Like midterms and finals happen at a time. And like, the rest of the year, it's a little bit easier to be flexible, or like during the summer, right? Alhamdulillah, the last few years, we've had Ramadan during like the summertime. So that's been good. But like, as, as somebody who's had to like do Ramadan like like while working, the one thing I can I can say for sure is there's always something. There's always a deliverable. There's always a client meeting. There's always an event that's happening that you have to balance with Ramadan and the priorities that you have during Ramadan. And my biggest thing is like setting goals that are achievable, right? Like. Um, you know, there's that there's a hadith of the prophet that like consistency is like more important than, you know, having these like big lofty goals about what you want to achieve. Yeah. Right. So if I think that's like a really big, important thing to take the heart, especially the older you get. Right. Because there's more and more things, more and more conflicts, more and more like items that require your attention. And if you can kind of set that goal, like I every day I want to be able to sit down before bed and read one chapter of Hadith, or I want to read one juice of Quran, um, or even if it's like, I want to read half a juice of Quran, like a day, like whatever it is, right, have that goal and like, do your best to do it right every day. Um, and I also think communication is really important, right? Like if you have something that's conflicting with one of your goals for Ramadan, and like, you have the flexibility to communicate that, like, if you're, you know, if you have a really tight deadline on something, and like, you want, uh, you wanted to be able to go pray thoroughly that day. Um, like you, you just have to communicate, like if you have a project team, like, Hey, like I need to go at like 10 PM to go do this thing. Like I can help up until that time, but like at that time, like I need to step out. I think, um, that communication and that goal setting is like the most important thing from my perspective. Mashallah, mashallah. Who wants to go next? Um, I can echo what Abid said, because <laughs> um, I don't know why anybody would want advice from me about that. But um, yeah, I think he really hit the nail on the head that that, that hadith is narrated by Aisha, anha. Um, you know, that Allah, the most beloved deeds to Allah are uh, the most regular and constant even if it's little and I think a lot of people start Ramadan with really lofty goals you know like I'm gonna fix everything that's wrong with me this Ramadan or I'm gonna just for one month do the most um, and you don't have to do the most I think just be consistent you know because you want to make changes that you're going to be able to maintain for the rest of the year and it's okay if you can't you know do that all right now just do the most that you can and of course Allah has made it for us where we you know you can go all out for a few nights and um if you really want to maximize your ajr but you know just just do small things you know help your mom make iftar maybe make your own dish for iftar because feeding fasting people is 
you know, you get major deeds for that. And it doesn't have, and that has, can be something that is not consistent. So you can go, go ahead and do that a few times, you know, or, or just do something very consistent, consistent, like, you know, Abid said, read a little bit of Quran every day, or just make sure, you know, I'm going to do all my prayers on time. You know, that's all I'm going to do. And I'm going to pray like Shifa with it or something like that, which I think, you know, you don't realize that, you know, a lot of, a lot of people are struggling with different things and, and just, just do whatever you can do and what you can do consistently. And Taha gave also amazing advice earlier, which is, you know, make, make the Nia that, you know, this is, I'm doing this work, study, whatever you have to do. I'm doing this because it's a commitment that I made and it's a promise that I made and I have to keep my word that I'm going to fulfill these responsibilities. And, and, you know, whatever you can do outside of that, that's khair for you. So, yeah, and I'll let Taha go because he's an actual student. <laughs> Mashallah, all you Taha, I know you shed some light early on, but I uh, would love to, to benefit, inshallah, with, with anything else you, you'd, you'd love to advise. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you guys. Uh, I guess referring to what I said earlier, I didn't realize uh, it was going to be brought up. Um, but yeah, I think just this uh, consistent theme of qu uh, quality over quantity our religion, I think is very beautiful and is something that can motivate anybody and whatever responsibilities, whatever it is that they have to balance along with Ramadan. Um, just reminding yourself about that quality over quantity theme that we have in our religion, I think goes a long way. Um, if you just keep that in mind and say you only have, if you, you want to go to Tarawi, say you only have time to pray four rakah or eight rakah or something out of the 20 say that they that they pray over there make that make those four rakah eight rakah make that like whatever you have whatever time that you are able to put towards worship in this month put all your effort in that right put, don't don't i guess uh put in half the energy don't like you know be still be lazy on the opportunities that you do have to uh, get, get rewards and benefits from this month. But like I said earlier, if you at the same time, don't look badly on your other commitments because those are things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put on your shoulders as well for a reason. So don't look at those as burdens, rather look, as the, look at those commitments as opportunities to continue to get closer to Allah. If you, if you can incorporate God consciousness and other actions in your life, then you can quickly see how how easy it is to just really continue to remember Allah and get closer to him whenever you can. So that's what I would say again. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Well, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for the past 20, 30 minutes, mashallah. I think we've been listening to nothing but bars and gems, mashallah. Uh, so, so I wanted to conclude the podcast, guys, by essentially doing something that we'd be doing every episode called Rapid Fire. So I know we've been kind of getting really deep uh, and really, hopefully, inshallah, benefiting about this blessed month and how we can best take advantage of it and whatnot. Now I want to conclude by a rapid fire round of some fun questions, inshallah. And some can actually be deep, depending on how you guys answer it. So I'll just ask all three of you guys the same question, then we can just go on to the next one. Does that sound cool? Great. Awesome. Okay, so let's start with Sana on this one. Sana, what is your favorite food? hamburgers <laughs> i love burgers like a good burger not like a whatever burger out of fast food place a good quality hamburger i love it i love it yeah, you guys are in texas so i'm sure you guys got a a lot of good ones mashallah <laughs> what about <Yep. laughs> what about you habit uh, i'm a taco and samosa guy like give me one of those two things and i'm set I love it. Well, it's Ramadan. That's best, best time for that. Uh, what about you, uh, Taha? I would say uh, cheese pizza. I struggle with uh, anything other than cheese on my pizza. Love it. I'm the same. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So next question. Uh, what is your favorite hobby? How about you, Abid? I'm working on a comic book right now. Uh, I, I, it's fun. <laughs> That's awesome. MashaAllah. What about you, Taha? 
Uh, watching, reading, and playing sports. Awesome, awesome. And what about you, Sana? Oh my God, this is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> this is really hard. Oh, I love to learn languages. Wow. I love to learn languages. That is that is so cool, mashallah. Awesome. All right, three more questions. So we'll start off with you, Taha. What is your favorite book aside from the Quran? Oh man, uh, I would say my favorite book is I uh, just recently read the Michelle Obama memoir, which I thought was really inspiring and, and uh, just amazing to read. So I'll just say that for now. Awesome, awesome. What about you, Sana? Gosh, I haven't read for fun in a long time. Um, I read a lot of cool books in my philosophy class, but I'm going to not do that answer. And I'm going to answer like from high school Sana's point of view. And I read this book called Before I Fall. And it's like a YA novel, super cheesy, but it made me like ball my eyes out and like appreciate my life a lot more like that I have a life alhamdulillah <laughs> so I'm gonna go with that one love it love it what about you Abid favorite is hard uh I I know two books I read that I liked a lot recently one is Contact which is a sci-fi novel by Carl Sagan if you know like the astrophysicist Carl Sagan he wrote like one piece of fiction his whole career just to show that sci-fi writers are bad at their job and wow. I thought it was a really, really good read. Uh, so I definitely recommend that. And another one is called uh, Children of Blood and Bone, which is about, uh, it's, it's a writer, the writer's name, her name is uh, Tommy or Tomi Adeyemi. I think she's Nigerian. Um, and it's like a series, but I've only read the first book and I really like that one a lot too. Um, yeah. My sister read that. It's oh my really god <laughs> she, she i was looking at it and i was like this looks so cool like a fantasy thing but like yeah. i said i haven't read for fun in so long <laughs> it's like it's like this really interesting it's like uh like afro mystic kind of take like imagine like avatar of the last airbender but kind of more in that frame of like afro mysticism um i thought it was a really really cool read that is that is some awesome stuff look at that Cool, guys. So we got just uh, two more questions. I'm really excited to hear this answer from you guys. Um, so how about Sana? Where is your favorite or what is your favorite place once this pandemic is over that you would want to travel to? Your go to Algeria. Place? Hands down, Algeria. I'm Algerian and I miss my family. I miss the motherland. I miss the beaches. I miss going on the plane. I miss not speaking English. <laughs> I miss so many things. And they the borders have been closed ever since quarantine started. And it's been years since I went. And yeah, that's where I want to go. I love it. I love it. What about you, Taha? Man, I'm going to have to say probably, does that have to be international? It can be anywhere. Anywhere you want. I guess uh, I'll have to go with Turkey. Uh, I really wanted to go there, seeing so much about their beautiful culture and architecture over there, especially Istanbul. So inshallah, Allah gives me a chance to go there. Inshallah, love it. What about you, Abid? I don't think my answer is as fun as these folks. Uh, I, I like uh, going on like domestic hiking trips. So I like like flying to a new city and like hiking in some state parks and like spending a few days getting to like know that place. And I think Boise, Idaho is next on my list. It's not like, oh my God, I'm going to Boise, Idaho, but like, I really want to go check it out. I feel like it'd be, it'd be fun to go like to those parks up there. That uh, looks really different. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome stuff, man. Well, well, alhamdulillah guys, these are some awesome, awesome answers to the questions we have. The last question for the rapid fire round, and this is by far my favorite one. Uh, so I'm really excited to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, we ask this in every single podcast episode, and we can start off with you, Taha. This, is, this, this can be deep now if you guys want, but if you can give advice to your younger self, what would it be? How young are we talking? Does any, any young? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it could, be, it could totally be anything up to you guys. So typically, obviously, those who we have on the guest 
are a little bit older, so they, they I'm sure are talking to their student selves. But I guess this could be anything. It could be your high school self. It could be your middle school self. But you can just go back in time and, and give your younger self whatever you picture your younger self being. What would that advice be? Sure, man. Um, I guess my advice to my younger self would be um, just continue to continue to trust Allah because you'll never know where he what he puts in your path and how he'll continue to uh, watch over you. Um, I think it's crazy that just like, man, it's crazy because I live in Dallas right now. And uh, I used to live in uh, Albany, New York, upstate New York for like, maybe 15, 16 years. And uh, we, our family wanted to move to Dallas. We, we didn't really have family around for the longest time. But I remember like the first opportunity I had to lead in Ramadan, um, I was leading at Qiyam and I could remember my first time leading, it was a exciting moment for me. And in Sujood in Ramadan, I was making dua that Ya Allah, allow us to like, you know, move to, move to a better place, uh, allow us to be reunited, like united with a lot of our relatives and family. Just making that dua as like a 13 year old kid, like, you know, I didn't really think much of it at the time, but like fast forward, like maybe a couple years later, and now like I'm living in an amazing place where a lot of my other family happened to move here as well. So I'm in a better place with a lot of family and alhamdulillah is just amazing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered a dua that I had as like a 13 year old kid making sajda in Ramadan. And Allah, I look back at my life and I just see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really had my back and really helped me make decisions and do things that were best for me. And if you just, I would tell my younger self, like whatever worries that you're having, whatever struggles that you're going through, just know that Allah is watching over you and he does have a better plan for you and continue to have trust in him because he's the best thing that you have. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, MashaAllah. How about you, Abid? Uh, I, y'all are really throwing us the good questions. <laughs> uh, I think if I had to give advice to younger Abid, uh, that would have been a hard conversation. I don't know, but I think I would probably say like, commit, listen, and enjoy. So like, yeah, when you like sign up to do something, like put your heart and soul into it, right? And like. I feel like I'm, I like, that's something that I really like need to take, needed to take to heart when I was younger is just like really be in it, you know, um, but also like listen to people, right? When they give you advice or they're trying to guide you in that direction, like take that input, right? Because what, what the worst thing that can happen is it turns out to be bad advice and you learn from it and you move on, um, but like be receptive to that, right? Um, and then enjoy life, I think, is the most important thing. I think a lot of times at this age that we're at now, especially like as we've been growing up, it's been life has been so much like I need to get to X, right? I need to accomplish this goal. I need to achieve something by the time I like graduate from high school. I need to get this SAT score. I need to go to this college. I need to get this job. But I think sometimes like you forget in the middle that there's like all this stuff Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to, like enjoy, right? Like spend time with your friends, spend time with your loved ones, like go experience the world, right? Like enjoy life. I feel like is that's like a really important lesson I should have taken to heart a lot sooner. Um, and even now, like, you know, inshallah, I'll continue to get better at that. Allah, mashallah, mashallah. How, how about you, Sana? SubhanAllah, someone asked me this question like <laughs> recently actually um because the whole like journey from undergrad to like professional school and stuff is really difficult um I want to echo what Taha and Abid said completely <laughs> this this is like really good advice um but I think I would give all that advice and I would say don't compare yourself to others um I think I did that a lot when I was younger I still do um but it really slows you down when you compare yourself to other people um you know not that everything is a race but it just 
it it brings you down when you can you can be you know taking advantage of what your unique situation is and your skills are and everything happens for a reason and you hear that a lot but you need to actually internalize that everything happens for a reason um you know failure is a part of success and and you and you shouldn't have to look at what everybody else is doing and say oh god like I'm so behind on this or I'm so you know I haven't accomplished anything in my life and you know a lot of people suffer from imposter syndrome and stuff like that um so yeah I would say don't don't compare yourself to anybody else you're you're doing fine sweetie you're doing great (laughs) you're gonna you're gonna make it where you need to be because as long as you have like Laha said trust in Allah you know and 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 you and you focus on what makes you happy and what's fulfilling to you you know you can't you can't lose Alhamdulillah. May Allah reward all of you. This is so inspiring for myself first and foremost. And I sincerely pray that everyone listening, inshallah, takes benefit from all of this. The, this bars and gems, mashallah, that, that seriously is, is great, mashallah. I wanted to thank all three of you guys for attending today. Alhamdulillah. It was such a fun conversation with all of you guys. And I wanted to thank everyone listening, of course, for your time listening. And I, and I pray, inshallah, you can keep you can make dua uh, for these three special guests on our today's episode of the podcast, of course. Uh, we'll have Lone Star's social media links and all that good stuff, inshallah, in the description. So be sure to check them out. They're doing amazing work, mashallah, as you even heard today in the today's episode. May Allah reward all of you guys. And inshallah, we'll see you on the next episode of the MSA National Podcast. Podcast.